Seems out about Rutgers when you watch that defense. Upfield. Yeah, I think they're an experienced group. Um, play really hard, and uh, they do a lot of things, you know, right. Um, not gonna make too many mistakes, and uh, yeah, it's, it'll be a good test for us and see where we're at. The offense created quite a few explosive plays last week. Mm -hmm. um, just in terms of having those wide receivers, you know, being vertical threats down the field, what have you seen from them so far this season? Yeah, I think they can win either way down the field or, or catch and run. Um, I think that's the beauty of it is you don't have to force them down the field and, you know, you can get them the ball in space and they'll make plays. So uh, it's a lot of fun and I know uh, they'll keep working and, and we'll be better this week. How much have you mastered that draw the pass interference throw? I mean, we haven't really seen a quarterback in Nebraska draw the number you have in the last few weeks. I mean, is that something that you know is there potentially the way yeah. the enemies are playing? Uh, honestly, no. We 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 actually want to you know complete those balls and and get those get those catches for those guys. But um, just the, just the way teams that play us and and um, the way they go up for the ball, uh, I think that just draws a pass interference. Um, I mean, we have big receivers and and uh, you know. That's 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 kind of their way of covering them, but uh, you know it'll be a disciplined football team this week, so we'll have to figure out other ways to move the ball. In what ways did you? Um, what did you enjoy about playing on the road and being in a place that you know was host, host, somewhat hostile, um, mm -hmm. and and just having that experience for the first time in your career? Yeah, I think it's awesome. You know, you go to all these Big Ten schools, or we will, and you kind of just you kind of take in what what each school offers and. Um, I think that's that's the beauty of the Big Ten is there's there's all kind of different cities and and you know different things that make that place special. So um, I thought it was a great atmosphere. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's nothing like being at home though. You know, we we're, we're happy to be back home this week and and be in front of our fans. Halfway through your freshman season here, what's been the value of having a bunch of old guys on the line and, and seniors at receiver to kind of help you adjust and settle in? Yeah, you know, they, they make plays and then they take a lot off of my plate and, um, you know, couldn't be more more grateful and, and uh, you know, just learn so much from them every day. And, uh, you know, receivers, to have the, the older guys that we have and, you know, we have a lot of younger guys making plays. So I think you have a group of older guys making plays and younger guys. Um, things can get scary if you, if you put it all together. Dylan, how valuable is it to, you know, go to the younger guys with guys like Ja'Cory Barney and Carter Nelson for you guys to kind of grow and yeah. learn and develop through this together as a freshman class? Yeah, I think it's it's pivotal to have, um, you know, like live game reps with these guys. I think that that's only going to speed up their process of, of getting better um, for all of us. And, uh, yeah, I think it's just, just a mentality we come out and practice to, to help us prepare us for the game. So, um, yeah, we, we come out every day and, and we try to make it as game-like as possible. And so when we get in the game, it's it's nothing new. To Corey in particular, how much fun is it to watch him when he has the ball in his hands? Oh, it's it's something special. I mean, that guy's he's probably one of my best friends on the team, and you know, roommate in, in the dorms, and um, we you know we we've done everything together since we've been here. So um, to see his work pay off and, and just see how much fun he has doing it, um, I couldn't be more proud of him. And um, I know he's just scratching the surface. You didn't score, but did you like when that call came in for Carter over the top to try to get in there? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. That, that was a uh, that was that was something we put in late in the week. But uh, I wish he would have scored, but we ended up scoring the next play. So, yeah, it was good. Rutgers has one of the best uh, red zone defenses in the country. When you look at the tape from last week in the first half, uh, what personally do you want to improve going forward? Um, so you're not coming up empty on those opportunities this week. Yeah, we just we kind of just got to focus on the details of of what we're trying to execute in the red zone. Um, I mean, we we've kind of peaked the red zone, but we haven't haven't really studied it yet. But uh, you know, look forward to it. make sure we study it study it a little extra this week. And um, that's kind of what you have to do in the Big Ten is score in the red zone. So um, we'll scratch and claw and find try to find our way into the paint. Gunner made his first start last week, and mm -hmm. you really got to trust your left tackle, you know, to protect your blind side there. Just what did you think of the job he did to, to keep you clean? Yeah, he did. He did awesome. Um, we couldn't couldn't be more happy for him. Um, and you know, young guy making his first start. Um, they had a good player on their team, and um, you know, for him to go out there and execute the way he did, and um, just just really proud of him. And I know he, he he's going to keep getting better. And um, you know, he's he's got a lot of help from you know Teddy and Turner, like. Those older guys are pouring into them every day, so um, it, it's just it's kind of just the culture we have established here of, of getting everybody better and, and next man up. Bill, you've, you've gone against here, right? 
Yeah, I, I think he's a really good corner. Um, you know, you've seen in the game he's he can cover deep, he can he can jump jump your routes and uh I think that's what makes him makes him good is he's he's he can do anything that you ask him to do. Um and he can play his own coverage and he's a smart football player, so um I mean that's my scouting report without giving you too much information on him. How often are you kind of going to Coach Satterfield and giving him sort of ideas of things to do maybe in the upcoming game or different play calls that you'd like to see, that kind of thing? Yeah, it's it's an ongoing conversation all week. Um, I'd say it's it's almost all the way up until Friday um, before we print out whatever sheets and scripts and all those kind of things. But it's ongoing all week. And, um, yeah, it's it's just conversation more of, of what I see or what he sees and, and – I think the sooner we get that done in the week, the more we can practice it and see it in, in practice. So, um, yeah, it's, I have a great relationship with him, and I think our whole offense does, and, and they're comfortable going to talk to him as well. Does that carry over during the game then? Like you're talking to him when the defense is out on the field, like what you're seeing, what he's seeing, to kind of put those ideas together? Yeah, we, we talk, we talk um, you know, pretty like every other drive, and it kind of goes – his line of communication goes to my quarterback coach. and. I'd say we're all, everyone's all on the same page on the offensive side. When we get to the sideline, everyone sees the same thing. And I think that just goes back to the preparation all week that we, that we put in. And, um, you know, you, you work so hard during the week just to go out in the game and, and to be free and, and play football.